Now we're going to be moving into a couple of rules. We're going to call it like vertical angle theorem and linear pair. But um, let me just talk about something really quick. Let's say, let me explain something here. Let's say I had an angle of a line. Okay, so I have a line here. Let's just assume that's a line, right? It continues going on forever. The angle of a line. Basically, this angle. Um, I know the circle is 360. So that looks like half of a circle. So I'm going to call that 180, right? I don't need to be told. I can tell it looks like half of a circle is 180. Now, one thing that we're going to call linear pair. So linear sounds like a line. So the angle of a line. Pair sounds like two. Now, this angle of a line... I'm going to break it into two angles. Let me call this angle A, and let me call this angle B. Now, I don't know exactly how big is A. I don't know exactly how big is B. But if I'm told how big is one of them, right, either angle A or angle B, if I'm told how big is one of them, I will be able to figure out how big is the other one. And the reason why, because I know both of them combined is 180. Hmm, interesting. Okay. We're going to call this linear pair because these two angles make angle of a line. So that means they add up to 180. If I'm told how big is one of them, I should be able to figure out the other one is 180. So this is linear pair. Now, sometimes I'm going to give you guys pictures that might have nothing to do with the angle. I might add a line here. I might add a, like a little segment over here. I may add other figures just to throw you guys off. But notice have nothing to do with angle A and angle B. So that's one rule we're going to look. Linear pair. Now, having that said, we, we can also come up with a, something called vertical angle theorem. Now, vertical angle theorem says, imagine you have an angle and then you have another angle, but combined, they form an X. You guys see my X here. One, let me show you something really cool. Let's say this angle here, it is 100. Then I'm going to say this angle here, it is 80, right? Because they look like a linear pair. Those two angles look like a linear pair. Are there extra... Uh, marks in there? Yeah, there, there, there's extra marks. But then I'm also going to say this angle right here, it is 80. And the reason why, because these two angles, if you notice, they form a linear pair. One of them is 100, the other one is 80. So that's not that bad. But then I'm also going to say this angle here is 100. And the reason why is because these two angles they form a linear pair. So if one of them is 80, the other one is 100, right? Because I said linear pair, they have to add up to 180. Now, interesting, very interesting on vertical angle theorem is when there's an X, let me emphasize my X here. Opposite angles are equal. Opposite in geometry means on the other side, right? Far away. This angle with this angle are equal, 100 and 100. And look at the 80s. They are opposite from each other. So that's what we call vertical angle theorem. Now, am I going to have you guys memorize the name, vertical angle theorem? Not quite. Not quite. I'm not quite interested in the name. I will use the name often through the rest of the year. I will use the name. But what I really want you guys to see is when there's an X formed, Opposite angles are equal, and adjacent angles add up to 180. Hmm, adjacent, what does adjacent mean? Next to. Opposite means far away. Adjacent means next to. Okay? So, again, that happens when there's an X form. Can I add extra lines in there to throw you off? Of course. That's pretty much what I'm going to do. Let's take a look at question number one. I'm going to work the first six questions today. It says, find the value of X. Let me highlight my angles here. Uh, it seems like for my angles, I'm using this line and I'm using this other line. There's an extra line there. 
that has nothing to do with my angles. Notice there's my angle 2x and my angle 84. Because it is not it has nothing to do with my angles, let me actually delete it. Let me cancel it out. You guys can see I can come over and take it out in your mind, in your case, you will have to do it in your mind. But now here, I'm looking at an X. So I'm thinking vertical angle theorem. Angles that are opposite from each other are equal. So I'm looking at this as two times X. It's equal to 84. My question is find the value of X. All right, we learned back in algebra one, that I'm going to do opposite operation. Here's this 2 times x, right? 2x, a number and a letter together means times. The opposite of times is divide. So let me divide by the number in front of x. It's not that the 2's cancel out. It's just that 2 divided by 2 is 1. So 1x. I'm literally just going to write an x, but really that means 1x. That's why we divide it by the number in front of x because uh, it will give me a one, right? Two divided by two is one, so one X. 84 divided by two is 42. My instructions were find the value of X. I know X equals 42, so guess what? I'm done, 42. Now, don't type in X equals 42, just type in 42. Let me take a look at question number two. Let me emphasize the segments that are used for my angles. I'm doing, I'm using these two lines because I'm looking at, this is angle 32 and this is angle 4X. There are extra things. There are extra things. And I could probably just cross them out. Right, This segment right here has nothing to do with my angles. I said, I'm gonna give you extra extra marks in there just to see if you understand. Now, when I take a look at it, the, the segments that were used, I see an X and I remember, according to vertical angle theorem, opposite angles are equal to each other. So I'm just gonna say four times X equals 32. And my instructions are find the value of X. So let me divide by the number in front of X. So let me divide by four. I know 32 divided by 4 is 8, so x is equal to 8. Again, on the left side, my 4s did not just disappear. It's just a 4 divided by 4 became 1, 1x. One Again, on your homework, you don't have to type in x equals 8, just an 8. You know, this was a question on your homework. I'm expecting just an 8. I'm, I'm expecting x equals. So just a number. Let's take a look at question number three. Now here, I don't quite see an X. When I look at the sides of the lines that make my angle, I see this line makes my 2X and that makes my 60. Okay, so that's not quite an X. So I'm not going to say 2X equals 60. Right? I'm not, I'm not going to use vertical angle theorem. However... When I think of this angle here, this whole thing is nine is is one eighty, right? This whole thing is one eighty. I caught it here because of this box right here. I know this angle right here it is ninety. That's what the box means. So that means these two other angles have to be ninety combined because all together is one eighty, right? So those two combined, keyword combined, have to equal to 90. Huh. So what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to say 2 times x plus 60, because I said combined, 2x plus 60 have to equal to 90. Okay, sometimes I'm going to have these angles add up to 90, like this case. Sometimes you guys will actually see that they add up to 180. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with these. So 2x plus 6 equals 90. Solve for x. We learned back in algebra that we want to have the x by itself. Probably your te algebra teacher used the word isolate. You know, if that rings a bell, that means have the x term by itself. What I'm going to do, let me separate my size to the equal sign. 
Now this plus 60, let me move it over as a minus 60. Don't forget to switch your sign. From a plus, I wrote it as a minus. I did opposite operation. You know, that's what your algebra teacher pushed for a lot. Opposite operation. So I have the 2x is equal to 30. Because right? 90 minus 60, that's 30. Okay, so I have 2 times x equals 30. Now let me divide by the number in front of x. And the 2 divided by 2 is 1. So 1x, 30 divided by 2 is 15. So x is equal to 15. Let's take a look at number 4. For 5x, I'm looking at that angle. And for 2x plus 6, I'm looking at this angle. That's not quite an x. I'm not going to use vertical angle theorem. But I do emphasize here a little box. Let me emphasize the little box. Those two angles combined add up to 90. So I'm going to say 5x plus 2x plus 6. In this case, they add up to 90. Let me separate my sides through the equal sign. The left side, there's a bunch of things. I can combine like terms. 5x plus 2x, we talked back in foundations, pre-algebra, however you guys want to call it, we talk about like terms. 5x plus 2x can be combined. So I'm going to call that 7x plus 6. It's equal to 90. All right, I want the x term by itself. So the plus 6, let me move it over. That's a minus 6. Don't forget opposite operation. So I have that 7x is equal to 90 minus 6 is 84. Okay, now let me divide by 7. So 7 divided by 7 is 1. So I get 1x equals 84 divided by 7 is 12. So x is equal to 12. Let's take a look at question number five. I see my 3x is made here. I see my angle 3x. 2x plus 10, I see it here, right? These two angles. Hmm, interesting. Now, those two angles do not add up to 90. I can tell 3x. I don't know exactly how big is 3x, but I can tell 3x is more than 90, right? Because 90 was an L shape will be somewhere about here. So I can tell that 3x is more than 90. So I'm not going to say those two added up equals to 90. I'm not going to say that. Instead, I want to say 3x plus 2x plus 10 equals, in this case, they add up to 180. Right? You see this angle. You see this other angle. Combined is half of a circle. Okay, let me separate it through the equal side. The left side, I can combine like terms. 3x plus 2x. Right, we, we know how to do those. So let me call this 5x plus 10 is equal to 180. I have to leave the x by itself. So this plus 10, let me move it over. That's a minus 10. Don't forget opposite operation. So I have that 5x is equal to 170. Let me divide both sides by 5. 170 divided by 5 gives me 34. Right. 5 divided by 5 gave me 1, so 1x. 170 divided by 5 gives me 34. So x equals 34. Good. That's not bad. Let's take a look at number 6. Take a look at these angles. Would I let them equal each other? I see an X. I see an X form. Now, are they opposite from each other? If they were, then I would let them equal to each other. 5X plus 2 equals 63 and solve for X if they were opposite from each other, but they're not. In reality, I see this angle and I see this angle. That looks like a linear pair. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go 5x plus 2. I'm going to combine these angles. 5x plus 2 plus 63 is going to equal to 180. Let me fix my x. That looks really weird. 
So I have 5x plus 2 plus 63 equals 180. Let me separate it through the equal sign. Letter-wise, I only have 5x. I'm going to combine like terms. Letter-wise, I only got 5x. Plus 2, 2 plus 63, that is 65. Again, I'm combining like terms, and all of this is equal to 180. Okay. So I want the 5x by itself. So the plus 65, let me move it over. Don't forget to switch the sign. So I have the 5x equals 180 minus 65 is 115. Let me divide by 5, the number in front of x, because 5 divided by 5 is 1, 1x. 1 115 divided by 5 is 23. So x is equal to 23.